Welcome back, nerds. Fino here with a guide for Battle in New York, aka Gilfest, aka Nerofest 4. No one calls it Nerofest 4. But like Nerofest, the event is split between high difficulty exhibition quests and lottery box farming. The general progression here is that you spend the first bit of time farming event CEs. First, you scrounge up shop currency for copies of Caldea Kitchen Truck, which increases lotto currency drops. Buying these should be your highest priority. Once you have them all, you equip them and go into the last free quest, which gives large amounts of lotto currency. Taking those earnings, you go into the lottery itself and pull for copies of the second event CE, Return Match. This gives you a substantial damage bonus within Gilfest 1, and it comes with a Guts proc to boot. Most players will find this absolutely essential for doing the exhibition quests. Speaking of which, the exhibition quests are like challenge quests with yet another layer of difficulty. First of all, you can't revive. Not with command seals and not with quartz. Second of all, no duplicate servant IDs, though class variants are okay. What this means is that doubling up on your support caster is not an option. No double Scotty puts quick servants at a disadvantage. That said, these battles are tough enough that you can't just unga bunga through them. At least not until Lost Belt 4, but that's a subject for next year. I'll be covering specific EQs in separate videos for ease of searching, so we'll leave it at that. As a lottery event, a battle in New York is a prime target for hard farming. Outside of reruns, lottos are infinite, meaning that you can dump all your apples to acquire large amounts of goodies. If you're feeling a bit cetacean, you can even use rainbow apples. For the first few boxes, you'll have the option of refreshing once you get the grand prize. Don't do this unless you're in an extreme rush. From box 11 onward, you'll stop getting grand prizes and have to clear the whole thing to advance. Absolutely worth it. You get QP, embers, skill gems, and ascension materials which more than justify the grind. Serpent jewels, Mordred nut, Pokemon badges, and the ever-addictive Void Cocaine. As a matter of efficiency, I'd only pull the first 5 boxes for return match and save the rest until the exchange period. Unless you need materials right now to set up a farming team or finish an exhibition quest, that time is better spent accumulating more lotto currency. The lotto also gives gold bars which you can trade for special shop items, including command codes. I found two of these interesting, and the first of these is Lynchpin of Heaven. This increases damage against enemies that are weak to Enema Elish. So in other words, the overwhelming majority of servants. Well, depending on where you look, it might say it works against servants that don't have the star attribute. Here's the thing though. Enema Elish itself shares that bit of text, but that's not how it works. It's really dumb, but I'm pretty sure this command code works like Enema Elish, and doesn't actually do what it says on the tin. Or maybe they'll fix the text by the time we get it. Who knows? The second is God Binding Chains, which increases anti-divine damage. Both are worth picking up, though I'd imagine clearing the shop won't be an issue for most of you. Now let's talk about actually farming Gilfest. It's divided into three phases, with the free quest changing for each one. That said, they all follow the pattern of garbage, bronze currency, silver currency, gold currency, and lotto currency. The only one you really need to plan for is that final type, which should be called Garden Difficulty. If you know life it, that's the one you'll be throwing yourself at. So with that in mind, let's look at the three versions. Prelims has you fighting a mixed Lancer Zerk node, meaning sabers rule the day. Zerk a lot too, but that's Scotty for ya. Semifinals has some more spice, being an assassin fight pinning you against Danzo and Kotaro on the final wave. Given their ability to spam evades on each other, you really want to take them out on the first pass. That said, you do have a lot of fun and affordable choices, including Paracelsus, Sieg, and Nidacris. That third one you could have gotten from the previous 4-star ticket. Last up are the finals. This one has a nasty mix of sabers and assassins, culminating in a Musashi-Oki duo. Here the typical Lancelot setup does its work. That said, if you have 250% battery supports and access to an extremely strong Jarcher, you can actually run a deployment with 6 total copies of Caldea Kitchen Truck, something Scotty teams can't do. If you want more information on forming and piloting these farming setups, I highly recommend the trio of videos that Cadroth did on the subject. They're divided by card type and I'll link the arts one in the video description. If you're a lunatic like me, you'll be farming through all three stages of the event. But for those of you who don't have an open-ended commitment, you can opt to dump all your apples during a single phase. Whichever lets you field a team with the highest number of CKTs while clearing quickly. One thing to keep in mind is that small efficiency gains in a single run translate to huge gains over the event. If they're consistent. For this reason, I'd avoid using slow or volatile comps that sacrifice reliability to run 6 CEs. Getting those extra drops on a single run might be okay if you're doing a small number of runs, but taking 10 plus turns every time is not a scalable strategy. Past a certain point, time becomes the bottleneck, not AP. Not to mention the far more mundane problem that if you full brain every farming run, there's a much higher chance of you burning out prematurely. 
If you have a weaker account, you might not have a choice in the matter, but it's something to keep in mind regardless. And with that, I think we're about done. Lotto events are always worth farming, and Gilfest is no exception. With some planning, apples, and persistence, you can get a lot of value without driving yourself insane. Probably. We'll see. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come watch me on Twitch where I stream every weekend. Friday through Sunday at 3pm Pacific is my usual schedule, though you might see the odd weekday stream, especially during Gilfest. I'd recommend following me there so you know when it's happening. See you there.